6.3 is multiplication of a vector by a scalar. So a scalar is just a number, right? So the vector ka, now some of this is read out of your textbook, but I don't think it's, um, it's explained as well in words as with a little picture. So I'm going to give you some little visuals to go with it. So for the vector ka, where k is a scalar, so just think of that as a real number. And a, vector a, has a sign over it, so it's vector a, is a non-zero vector. If k is greater than zero, so you're multiplying by two, three, four, five, or something, or a fraction, then k vector a is in the same direction with a magnitude of k times the magnitude of vector a. Okay, so when we multiply this out, we're, we have a scalar, right? This is a scalar quantity because a magnitude of vector is no longer a vector. It's a scalar quantity. It's a length. It's a magnitude. Okay, so be careful with that. And I think that's something that uh, <clears throat> people get confused with when they see these absolute value signs. This is a scalar. Okay, so more on that in a minute. So if vector, the magnitude of vector A is 1, so I've drawn a vector in this direction, so it has magnitude and direction, and I say, what's 2 times vector A? Well, it's 2 times the length. How simple is that, right? 2 times the magnitude of A would be 2 times 1 is 2. So the magnitude of 2 vector A's is 2. If I reduced it by a half, so I said now I have a half vector A, then a half times the vector A is going to be half times 1, because I told you this was one unit, and its magnitude is a half. Now, if k is less than 0 in the opposite direction, so if I said negative vector a, so I'm multiplying by negative 1 here, I now have my vector just going in the other way. And minus 2 times that, it's the same, it's twice as long going in the opposite direction, or negative a half is going in the opposite direction. What is the magnitude though? Remember, magnitude is always an absolute value. So it's the absolute value of my scalar times the magnitude of the vector. The magnitude of vector was always one here. I'm multiplying it by the absolute value of negative one. And so I end up with one. This one I made a mistake on because the absolute value of two is two. So it has a magnitude of two, just like this one does, right? They're the same length, it's just the opposite direction. And same thing for this one. So they're all positive magnitudes. Magnitude is always a positive value. Note, if you are multiplying a vector by zero, you get the zero vector. You don't get zero. So multiplying a vector times zero, you get the zero vector. The zero vector is not equal to zero. Just remember that because they do have something called a zero vector. Okay, in your homework questions, the first thing they're going to ask you is, why is the mag is vector A equal to 2 times the magnitude of B not meaningful? Well, it's not meaningful because this is a magnitude. So you can't say a vector is equal to a magnitude. Okay, so a vector is equal to a vector. Uh, you could say vector a is equal to 2 times vector b without these absolute value signs so that would mean a is 2 vector b's not 2 magnitudes of vector b question 13 in your homework also identifies this a little clear clearly as well i think so they show um, a b c d e these are all equally spaced and they say a d from here to here is vector a what is e to c then so if I go e to c, I'm going in the opposite direction, right? e to c would be a vector like this. And the question is, how does that relate to vector a? So I'm going in the opposite direction. I'm going 2 of 3, because vector a was 3 units. So it's going to be 2 thirds vector a, but in the opposite direction. So it's going to be minus 2 thirds vector a. And that is meaningful because I've got a vector and a vector. Um, what is BC? B to C? Oh, that's just one third of vector A. Pretty simple, isn't it? When you see how it's done. I know it's kind of confusing all this vector language. It's like learning, learning a new language, isn't it? 
So the magnitude of ED, the magnitude of ED, well, that's equal to one third, because it's only one third of A. So it's one third the magnitude of A. Notice this time, this makes sense because I have the magnitude here and the magnitude on this side. What is the magnitude of AC? AC, well, that would be two thirds, one, two of three. So that's two thirds of the magnitude. Oops, that was kind of funny. Two thirds the magnitude of A. And finally, what is A to E? Well, A to E, that's three thirds. That would be four thirds of vector A. Notice <clears throat> on both sides, I have vector, vector, magnitude, 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 magnitude. <coughs> and I'm losing my voice. Great. <clears throat> okay, so some more words. Oh my goodness, there's so many words in this lesson, isn't there? You have to understand what they're talking about, though, and that's why this one is a kind of a, <coughs> a wordy section. So if two or more vectors are non-zero scalar multiples of the same vector, then all these vectors are collinear. Okay, what does that mean? Two or more vectors are non-zero scalar multiples of the same vector. So let's say I have a vector here like this, and I do two times vector a. So two times vector a has to be in the same direction, right? So let's say this is vector b. So if these vectors are simply scalar multiples of each other, then they're collinear. Collinear means they're on the same line, or it could mean that I wrote my vector b over here like this. And I said, this is vector b, and without this one, so I'd say this is vector A, this is vector B. So vector B is parallel to vector A. And if I wanted to move it over here, I, I could put it right on top of it, right? Because vectors move, can move, right? They're not fixed on a plane. So this and this one and this one, they would still be collinear because it is a scalar multiple of this one in the same direction. So collinear is used interchangeably with parallel. It can also mean on the same line. Okay, something to put in your memory banks here. Linear dependency, what does that mean? If vector A and vector B are collinear, then A is equal to K times B. So in other words, if I had this one here where A and B are collinear, so B was from here to here, right? So a or b could be uh, two vector a's, right? So I could say a is equal to uh, one half of vector b in this case. If k is greater than zero, they have the same direction. If k is less than zero, they would have opposite directions. Yeah. It's pretty simple, but you still have to understand what they're talking about. Note, if it is stated that the angle between two vectors is theta, it is assumed that the vectors are placed tail to tail with theta between them. Uh, I've seen students um, when they're given a vector. So what that means is that if I have something like this, if I said vector A and vector B have an angle between them, it's this way. It's not this angle here. OK, this would be wrong. It's this one. That would be the right way. So just be careful that, you know, it's between. So it means tail to tail and the angle is between them. What is a unit vector? Um, you're going to see lots of this later on as well. We talk about unit vectors or find the unit vector when you're doing some, uh, some other work a little bit later. So it says a vector with a magnitude of 1. So if I said the magnitude of vector x is 4 and I wanted you to tell me what the unit vector is, the unit vector would be 1 fourth of the vector. Okay, so this would make it a magnitude of 1, a quarter of that vector, because this vector was 4. So all you're doing is you're taking this number and taking the absolute value of it. So in general terms, it means 1 over vector x, the magnitude, the absolute value, so the magnitude, which is a positive value, times vector x is the unit vector. And this is something that you will do as well several times in the course, finding a unit vector.
Okay, so just remember that because you'll see it down the road. Okay, that was a lot of words. Let's do some math because that's always so much more fun. Work with some numbers. It says if X and Y are unit vectors and make an angle of 30 degrees, calculate the magnitude of two vector X minus vector Y and determine the direction of two X minus Y, two vector X times. Okay, so make sure you watch when you're reading the question. If you see these absolute values, we're talking about the magnitude of it. That's the length of the line segment or the resultant. And this is the direction of the vectors. Okay, so let's draw a little picture so that we know what we're talking about. So if we had X and Y are unit vectors, so that means they only have, let's make them about, um, make them about uh, one and a half inches. Let's go for one and a half. So here's one and a half. That's going to be my vector X and my vector Y is the same length. They're both unit vectors and has an angle of 30 degrees between them. So here's my vector X, here's my vector Y, don't forget the little signs over them. And because it said 30 degrees, that means between them, between them, tail to tail. Should have arrows on them. Okay, so that was my unit vector, that's a start. Calculate the magnitude of 2X minus Y. Well, 2X, that means I'm going to have to make this twice as long. So it's going to go up to 3 here. Bloom like that. So this is going to be 2 vector x minus vector y. Oh, well, if it's minus vector y, then it's going in the opposite direction. So if this is going this way, we want a parallel line to it going in the opposite direction. So here's my vector y, which has still a unit vector but it's minus vector y. Okay, so now we have, we've drawn this very nicely and we need to know what is the resultant and the direction. So the resultant I'm looking for, of course, is from my starting point to the tip of this one. Let's make a little dotted line here. Well, we won't make it dotted, we'll make it like this. I'm going to just take all this paper up from underneath it because I know it's going to go right through and then I'm going to ruin. I don't have a lot of paper left. I need pens. I need paper, guys. Send me, send me paper and pencil. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so there's my resultant. Okay, so I need to determine. I know this length here. Right? This is has a length of 1. This has a magnitude of 1. So we'll just put a 1 here. And this one up here is 2 because they were unit vectors and I multiplied them by, um, multiply it by 2. So I have 2, 1. And now I need to figure out, um, I'm trying to find this length here. So remember when we did those other questions in 6.2, we needed to find the angle between these two so we could use the cosine law. So I want to know what is this angle right in here. Let me get a different color so you don't think has anything to do with something else. So I want to know what is this angle. Now because my vector y is in the opposite direction, these lines are parallel lines, right? So if that's 30 here, I have a nice z pattern and that makes this 30 degrees right in here. So you should be quite familiar with drawing those now because you're going to need to be doing that quite often in, uh, in your homework. Okay, so now we're going to find um, the magnitude of the resultant and mm, I'll put it in wonderful green. So the magnitude of R squared equals, now remember this is cosine law. Do I need to write it out? I don't think so. I'll say it and then you can write it out in your own notes if you want. So I have two vector x's magnitude of 2x squared. That's b squared, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2 times this one times this one it was a minus sorry it's in there times the cos 
of 30 degrees. So a squared, I'll bring it out here anyway, a squared is b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Right? That's all from grade 11. Okay, so all I have to do is plug in what these are, what the magnitudes are. So the magnitude of 2x is 2, so I have 2 squared. The magnitude of negative vector y is 1 and 1 squared minus 2 times 2 times 1 times the cos of 30 degrees. Okay, so it's going to give me 4 plus 1 plus 2 times 2 is 4. So that's minus, sorry, minus 4 times. And the cos of 30 is root 3 over 2. So that's minus 4 times root 3 over 2. And if you do all that math, I guess I don't really need to write it all out, do I? Let's do it like this. 5 minus 2 root 3. That's kind of cute, isn't it? And that's not the square root of it yet. So I want r magnitude of r to be the square root of all this. And that comes out to approximately 1.24. Okay, now if you remember all the other questions we did yesterday or in the last lesson, once you find the magnitude of r, so I'm going to call this 1.24, here, we evaluated that one, I need to know the direction of 2 vector x minus vector y. So you say, well, how am I going to figure out the direction because I don't have a compass point on here. I don't have any directions given other than this 30 degrees. So what we do is we talk about it relative to one of the vectors. So in other words, what I'm saying here is that I'm going to find the angle in here, I'll call it theta, and it's going to be clockwise from vector x. Okay, so you can, you could say from y, but it would be a long way around and you'd have to add them together. So I'm just going to find that angle right there. And of course, to do that, I'm going to use the sine law. So, uh, so this is part one, and then part two, put it over here. So sine law, remember you've got an opposite side. So I have this one with this one. And I have this one with this one. Right? So I have sine of 30 degrees over. And you're going to be using that resultant that you found, because it wouldn't work otherwise, is the sine of theta over 1. So sine theta is 1 times the sine 30. Sine theta equals 1 times sine 30 divided by 1.24. And if you do second function now, because you're trying to find theta, theta is approximately equal to 23.8 degrees. So in your concluding statement here, calculate this and determine the direction. You'd say, therefore, 1.24. Now, we didn't have... Um, well, we said they were units, so we could say 1.24 units, and then it would be 23.8 degrees clockwise. Now, you have to give a reference vector. You don't just say it's 23.8 degrees clockwise because that's kind of meaningless. You'd say relative to or from relative to um, vector x. Okay, so you need to... You need all these words to make sense of your solution. Okay, the last question I'm going to do is just a little bit different one that was in your homework. It's uh, question number seven. And I think that's page 299 for those of you who have the textbook. And the question says, um, A, B, and C, vector A, B, and C are collinear. So that means they're all on the same line. And A is two-thirds B and a is one half c. Determine integer values for m and n. I put a little vector over that and it wasn't supposed to be there, so just ignore that. For m and n, so that mc plus nb is equal to zero. Okay, so for, in order for me to make any sense of this, I need to write b and c in terms of a, and that's the first step I'm going to do. So I'm going to write 
B and C in terms of A. Vector A. Okay, so vector B is 3 halves vector A, right? If I multiplied this side by 3 halves, that by 3 halves. So B is equal to 3 halves vector A. And C would be 2 times vector A. 2 vector A's. So once I have that, I can plug that back into um, this equation here. So I have 2... C, C is two vector A, so 2MA, let me get my pencil, so two vector MAs, so I'm replacing C by 2A, and I'm going to replace B by 3 halves A, so plus 3 halves N, vector a is equal to zero. So far so good. Now just to clean things up I'm going to multiply times two to get rid of my, my fraction in the denominator. So 4ma plus 3ma's is going to be equal to vector, it was vector zero, sorry, I should have had a vector there. So what would make this zero? So if, um, if m was 3, this would be 12 vector a's, and I made n negative 4, so I'd have negative 12 n a's, then I would have 0, right? So that's all you have to do. You're looking for different multiples to get yourself back to the same, um, to get to 0. So if I said, if m was equal to negative 3, or I could change it the other way, I could say 3 or negative 3, and n was equal to 4, then this would work. So any multiple of these, like I could have put uh, positive 3 and negative 4, I could do um, negative 6 and positive 8. So there's an infinite number of solutions. I'm just using some nice whole, whole values right here, whole numbers but you could use anything you want. Okay, so that wraps up 6.3. Um, not a lot of work in here. Uh, I think it's pretty basic, but I think the terminology is what is more important for you to understand so that you'll see that later in, um, in the book and understand what they're talking about. So collinear, I think that was a concept my students had trouble with. What do you mean collinear? On the same line or parallel, used interchangeably a unit vector, and, you know, something as basic as doing a calculation like this. I know one of these showed up on the final exam, and a lot of my students didn't get it, and it was so basic. Anyway, that's it for now. Hope you're having a great day, and Vectors is moving along fine for you. Bye for now.